This is Seth David from the world famous Nerd Enterprises Incorporated, bringing to you another special screencast. This time we're talking about managing and tracking your inventory with QuickBooks. This is segment three, inventory with some assembly required. Knowledge is power. Make an impact by learning more. Call me right now at 866-945-8070 for information about private trainings or visit quickbooksanswers.info. quickbooksanswers.info for information about private trainings. We always record the live session with you so you can review it as often as you like afterwards. Remember when you used to get those toys when you were a kid that said some assembly required? Didn't you hate that? I know I hated it. I didn't want to assemble it. I just wanted to play with my toy. Well, in life and in business, sometimes there's some assembly required. And if we're selling inventory, there's a good chance that there's some assembly required, especially if the nature of our inventory is such that we're buying parts and putting them together to create a, a finished product. And that's what assembly items are all about. And QuickBooks has a great way to keep track of that. And again, it's not so difficult um, once you see how it's done, once you see it explained to you by somebody who understands how to explain it. So let's take a look at that. We're going to build an airplane today. It's very exciting. We're going to build an airplane. So let's go to our item list. In order to build an airplane, we're going to need a few things, right? So let's start adding some inventory parts because we're going to need some parts. The first thing we're going to need is we're going to need some wings, right? We're going to need two of those for each airplane, at least. And then we'll just book this to sales because this doesn't really matter. I'm not selling wings, but I do have to assign an account to it. Then I can click Next. And after wings, I'm going to need a cockpit. OK. And then in addition to the cockpit, I'm going to need a cabin. Right? That's the, the long part that's got all the chairs in it. And then last but not least, I'm going to need some landing gear. OK. So I've got my basic items set up so I can build my airplane. Now, once the and, and I always stress that you have to think in terms of what this looks like in real life. And in QuickBooks, that has to be mirrored. So what happens here is I'm going to have to buy these parts before I can actually build the plane. Right? So let's go, let's go buy the parts. Let's enter a bill. And we'll buy we'll buy the parts from my supplier. And let's go right to the items list. Okay? Let's say the cabin, I need one of these. Actually, we're going to build two airplanes. So I need two cabins. And let's say the cost of the cabins is going to be 200000 OK? Then I need a cockpit. Cockpits have all that fancy equipment in it. So let's say 300000 I need two of those. OK? Then I'm going to need some landing gear. Those aren't too terribly complicated, but I need two per plane, right? I need front and back wheels. Let's say they're 50000 a piece. OK, what else? Then I need wings, right? I need two wings for each plane. So I need four wings. And let's say the wings are 100000 Okay, so it's gonna, you know, the two planes are gonna cost me a total of a million six hundred thousand, about eight hundred thousand each. So let's save this, because now all I've done is buy all the parts, right? I'm not, I'm still not ready to sell the plane yet. I can't sell a plane because all I've done is purchase the parts. Let's assume they've been delivered. Now I have to build the airplane, and before I can even build the airplane, I have to create the infrastructure. I have to create the item in QuickBooks that represents the finished product, the, the airplane that's been built. So I need what's called an assembly item in QuickBooks. So let's create a new item here. It's called inventory assembly. And we'll call it airplane, right? We're building an airplane. The income account, we'll just call it airplane sales. I already set that up. And everything else is pretty much fine as a default. The other thing we need to do is we need to put in the sales price. Right, we need to like QuickBooks. Now, this is what I'm going to sell it for. It's not that critical. I can always do it later on when I invoice the item, but it's helpful to do it now. So we just saw, and I kind of went through it quickly, that the plane's going to cost us about eight hundred thousand to build, based on the parts. That's not including labor, of course. So let's just say we're going to sell the plane for two million. I love these nice big numbers, don't you? Now over here is where I'm going to start telling QuickBooks how I build that plane. This is where we're going to actually assemble it, right? This is the part that's kind of comparable in the real world to, you know, taking the wing, putting some glue on it, and sticking it to the cabin, 
right? And we're going to take the cockpit, we're going to put some glue on that, and we're going to attach it to the front of the cabin and so on. So this is fun. Now let's say this screen is kind of small and you don't really, you know, it's not that comfortable to work in. Just click this full view screen, right? And now it's just, it's a little easier to work with. It's a bigger screen. So let's build it here. We go into the cabin. I need one cabin for the plane. I need one cockpit for the plane. I need two landing gear for the plane. And I need two wings for the plane, right? Total cost down here, 800000 I click OK. It drops the information in here. Always stop for a minute here and just kind of verify everything that you've put in and make sure that everything looks right. Once you're done, click OK. Now again, I, st I still haven't built the plane. All I've done is tell QuickBooks what it's going to take to build it once I do. I've created the infrastructure, but notice I still don't have any planes on hand. If I look here, it's zero. So I have to, basically what I have to do is I have to actually build an airplane, which means I'm going to take pieces out of these component inventories and I'm going to put them into the airplane. So where do I go to do that? I go to vendors, right? I go to inventory activities and I want to come here to build assemblies. So it's vendors, then inventory activities, then build assemblies. Okay, now if this is something you're going to be doing a lot of, as I often point in private trainings, then what we may want to do is we may want to add this right up here to the icon bar. Find a good little uh, icon here that you like for it. Right, I don't care for now, I'm just going to pick anything, but this way you don't have to go through all that to get there. You just click a button. Okay, so now the assembly item here, we're going to build an airplane. And QuickBooks is pretty smart. Let me actually make this a little smaller so it's easier to see. QuickBooks is pretty smart. Because of the way I set things up, it knows I have enough quantities on hand of my inventory parts to build two of these. It says maximum number you can build from the quantity on hand is two. So down here, I just tell it, how many planes do I want to build? Let's build two of them, right? Let's just do it. So we're ready to sell them. And once I've established that I'm going to build two of them, it shows me here, here's the quantity on hand, here's the quantity needed, right? That's how you can tell I've got enough. So if for some reason, this doesn't show the number that you expect. If, it, if you think you should have enough inventory in hand to build three of them, and it says only two, you can see here where the problem is. Because it could be just one component that you don't have enough of. But it's not going to assume that you could, it's not going to let you go negative, in other words, on any of the component inventories on this. So you'd have to go back and fix that and maybe make an inventory adjustment if, in fact, you really did have you know, more on hand than, than what QuickBooks thinks you have. But once you've established that everything you, you have is in place to build the quantity that you want to build, click Build and Close. Okay. Now notice all the component inventories went to zero. I've now got two planes I can sell. And ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to sell my airplane to my customer, Mr. Always Right. And over here on the invoice, let's make this smaller. Very simple at this point. I'm selling him an airplane. Right, I'm selling them. I'm, I'm going to sell them two airplanes, actually. All right, two airplanes, two million dollars a piece. Total sale, four million dollars. Save and close. Done. I now have sold out all of my inventory. Let's see what this looks like in the final analysis. Let me run a balance sheet. Okay, this inventory asset is from the inventory we created in previous segments. Those are my whatchamacallits. I have accounts receivable of $4 million because I billed for the airplanes. I haven't necessarily gotten paid yet. I have some money in the bank, which is good. Of course, I haven't paid for these airplanes. I have accounts payable of a million six. Right? Don't have enough money to pay that off yet until I collect on my sale. So hopefully my supplier is nice and will wait until I get paid before I can pay him. Take a quick look at the profit and loss. What do we got? Very simple. I got an airplane sales, I got two airplane sales really. I got total airplane sales of $4 million. I got total cost of goods sold of a million six, right? Because that would have been the inventory before I sold the plane. Watch this. Let's blow things up. Let's make a mess. Let's delete the invoice. Watch what happens. Notice, I have nothing on my profit and loss. 
I now have inventory assets of a million six zero two five fifty because I have those other inventory items, right? And what'll happen is once I repost this invoice, to always write, come down here, let's sell them two airplanes. Again, watch what happens on my profit and loss on my balance sheet. Save and close. Boom, four million dollars in sales comes in, cost of goods sold comes in for a million six. My inventory asset drops down to 2,550. Accounts receivable comes in for four million, right? Because I haven't collected yet. Then of course, hopefully I get paid. Let's get paid by always right. They pay us four million dollars. Save. Nothing happens on the profit and loss, nothing changed there, but now I've got no more accounts receivable. The four million is in undeposited funds. Let's go make the deposit. Woohoo! Love getting paid. We'll put that in the bank account. Save. Right, now I've got almost five million in the bank. Very little inventory left. And I still have the accounts payable, so now we can pay our bill. Let's go pay the bill. We'll pay him by check. We'll write him a check for a million six. Pay selected bills. Done. Notice the PL is still the same. Nothing happened on the PL. All this activity, all this excitement is happening on the balance sheet. All I'm doing is moving money around on the balance sheet, basically, right? I collected the money. Then I was able to use that resource to pay off the bill. So now the planes are paid for. I've still got 3397 in the bank. A little bit of inventory from those whatchamacallits from the previous segments I've done on inventory so far. I've got uh, equity of three million four based on the million I put into the business and my net income to date of two million four hundred thousand. That's what my company's worth today. Folks, this is what I'm going to be talking about in great detail on this Friday's upcoming webinar, March 23rd, 2012, on managing and tracking your inventory with QuickBooks. Please sign up right now. I'm putting the link wherever you see this video and any other video where I'm talking about it. And if it's after the date, then look for the link in the same location, which I'll replace there, which will take you to where you can go to download the three-hour class. I am guaranteeing your satisfaction on this webinar. So if you're not happy after you've watched the video, just send me an email. I'll refund your money. Give me a call at 866-945-8070 if you have any questions or email me, seth at nerdenterprises.com. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day and I look forward to seeing you on the web.